The main holy text of rabbinical Judaism outside the Tanakh is the Talmud. This book is believed to be on some level divinely inspired supposedly encompassing the great and reliable memories of the ancient Jewish sages. However, this book, the Talmud, is filled with errors and anachronisms, which calls into question the very reliability of rabbinical tradition. One problem is that the sages of the Talmud believed that Esther and Daniel had met one another. Now, the book of Daniel is set between the third year of King Jehoiakim to the third year of of Cyrus, which is 605 to 536 BCE. The history of Nebuchadnezzar has been strongly confirmed by secular history. For example, Nebuchadnezzar constructed the Hanging Gardens, and also in 605 BCE, he fought the Battle of Carchemish against Egypt. Now, the Book of Esther is set during the reign of Ahasuerus, also known as Artaxerxes I. Now, this man, this ruler, reigned between 485 and 464 BCE and the book of Esther is set at some point during that time. This means that given the latest possible date for Daniel, and the absolute earliest possible date for Esther, at least 51 years passed between the end of Daniel and the beginning of Esther. This means that if we assume Esther takes place at the very beginning of the reign of Ahasuerus, and that Daniel was only 10 years old during the exile, so we give the most generous dating possible, it still means that Daniel could not have possibly been any younger than 130 years at the time of the book of Esther. The problem is, nobody is supposed to live for more than 120 years, since God decreed in Genesis 6-3, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. In other words, there is no possible way that Daniel was alive during the time of Esther. How is this significant? If we go to the Talmud, Bava Batra, page 4a, we read about the rabbinical discussions of Daniel. In this passage, the rabbis argue that a Jew is not allowed to give advice to a non-Jew regarding how the latter, how the non-Jew, can receive atonement. Rev. Yehuda said in the name of Rev. Yehoshua ben Levi, For what reason was Daniel punished? Because he gave advice to Nebuchadnezzar on how to escape the wrath of God. Now, the Talmud will try to explain the well-accepted belief that Daniel was punished for advising King Nebuchadnezzar. And how do we know Daniel was punished? In Esther we read, And Esther called to Hesach, that is, Daniel. Daniel was named Hesach because he was cut down from his greatness. But what about those who say that all the affairs of the state were decided by him? Well, for them, Daniel was punished by being thrown into the den of lions. The rabbis agree here that Daniel was in fact punished, but disagree on how God punished him. The first school says that Daniel was punished by being stripped of power, and the latter school agrees that Daniel was punished, but said that he was being thrown into the den of lions, even though the book of Daniel seems to indicate otherwise. In a footnote of the art school edition, it says that in the latter opinion, that he was thrown into lions, Daniel retained his high office during the reign of King Ahasuerus, and the name Hesach does not imply that Daniel was stripped of power for giving advice to Nebuchadnezzar. In other words, both schools of rabbinical thought agree that Daniel was called Hesach and was in Esther, but disagree on why he was called Hesach. This means that the rabbis of the Talmud agreed that Daniel of the book of Daniel was the same person as Hesach in the book of Esther. But of course, there is no way Daniel could be the same person as Hesach because he could not have lived that long. Shalom Aleichem.